Welcome back to SuperCloud 2. You know, this event in the SuperCloud initiative in general, it's an open industry-wide collaboration. Last August at SuperCloud 22, we really honed in on the definition, uh, which of course we've published. And there's this shared doc, which folks are still adding to and refining. In fact, just recently, Dr. Nelu Mihai added some critical points that really advance some of the community's initial principles. And today at SuperCloud 2, we're digging further into the topic with input from real world practitioners. And we're exploring that intersection of data, data mesh and cloud, and importantly, the realities and challenges of deploying technology to drive new business capability. And I'm pleased to welcome Ash Nasir to the program. He's a senior director of data engineering at Warner Brothers Discovery. Ash, great to see you again. Thanks so much for, for taking time with us. It's great to be back. These conversations are always very fun. I was so excited when we met last last spring, I guess. And so before we get started, I wanted to play a clip from that conversation. It was June, it was at the Snowflake Sum Summit in Las Vegas. And it's a comment that you made about your company, but also data mesh, data mesh. Guys, roll the clip. Yeah, so when people think of Warner Brothers, you always think of like the movie studio, but we're more than that, right? I mean, you think of HBO, you think of TNT, you think of CNN. We have 30 plus brands in our portfolio and each have their own needs. So the the idea of a data mesh really helps us because what we can do is we can federate access across the company so that you know CNN can work at their own pace. You know when there's election season, they can ingest their own data and they don't have to you know bump up against, as an example, HBO if Game of Thrones is going on. So okay, so that's pretty interesting. So you've got these sort of different groups that have different data requirements inside of your organization. Now, data mesh, it's a relatively new concept, so you're kind of ahead of the curve. So Ash, my question is, when you think about getting value from data and how that's changed over the past decade, you know, you've had, you know, pre-Hadoop, you know, Hadoop. Um, what do you see that's changed? You know, now you got the cloud coming in. What's changed? You know, what's, what had to be sort of fixed? What's working now and where do you see it going? Yeah, so I feel like in the last decade, we've gone through quite a maturity curve. Um, you know, I uh, I actually like to say that we're in the golden age of data uh, because the tools and technology, um, you know, in, in the data space particularly, and then broadly in the cloud, um, they allow us to do things that we couldn't do way back when, like you suggested back in the Hadoop era or even before that. Um, so there's certainly a lot of, maturity um, and a lot of technology that has come about. So in terms of the good, bad, and ugly, um, so let me let me kind of start with the good, right? Um, in terms of bringing value from the data, uh, I, I really feel like we're in this place where um, the folks that are charged with unlocking that value from the data, they're actually spending the majority of their time actually doing that. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Um, if you think about it, 10 years ago, um, the data scientist uh, you, you was, was you know, the, the person that was going to sort of solve all of uh, the data problems in a company. But what happened was companies um, asked these data scientists to come in and do a multitude of things. Um, and what these data scientists found out was they were spending most of their time on really data wrangling. Um, and less on actually getting the value out of the data. Um, and in the last decade or so, I feel like we've made the shift and we, we, we realized that data engineering, data management, data governance, those are as important practices uh, as data science, which is sort of getting the value out of the data. And so what that has done is it has freed up uh, the data scientist and the business analyst and the data analyst um, and the BI expert so to really focus on how to get value out of the data and spend less time wrangling um, data. So I really think that that's the good. Um, in terms of the bad, um, I feel like uh, there's a lot of uh, legacy data platforms out there. Um, and I feel like there's going to be a time uh, where we'll be in that hybrid mode. Um, 
And then the ugly, I feel like, you know, with all the data and all the technology creates another problem of itself um, because, you know, most companies don't have arms around their data um, and making sure that they know who's using the data, what they're using for, and how can sort of the company leverage the collective intelligence. That is a bigger problem to solve today than 10 years ago. And that's where technologies like the data mesh come in. Yeah, so when I think of, of data mesh, and you, like I said, you're an early practitioner of data mesh, you mentioned legacy technologies. And the concept of data mesh is inclusive. You're, you know, you're, you're, in theory anyway, you're supposed to be including the, the, the legacy technologies, whether it's a, a data lake or a data warehouse or Oracle or Snowflake or whatever it is. And when you think about Jamak Dagani's principles, it's you know, domain-centric ownership, data as product, and that creates challenges around self-serve infrastructure and, and automated governance. And then when you start to combine these different technologies, you got legacy, you got cloud, you know, it, everything's different. And so you have to figure out how to deal with that. So my question is, how have you dealt with that? And what role has the cloud played in, in solving those problems, in particular that self-serve infrastructure and that automated governance? And where are we in terms of solving that problem from a practitioner standpoint? Yeah, um, I always like to say that data is a team sport um, and we should sort of uh, think of it as such. And that's, I feel like the key of the data mesh concept um, is treating it as a team sport. Um, a lot of people ask me, um, they're like, oh, hey, uh, Ash, I've heard about this thing called data mesh. Where can I buy one? Or, you know, how, how, what's the technology that I use to, uh, to get a data mesh? Um, and the reality is that there isn't one technology. You can't really buy uh, a data mesh. It's, it's really a way of life. It's how organizations uh, decide to approach data. Like I said, back to the team being a team sport analogy, making sure that everyone has the seat on the table, making sure that we embrace the fact that we have a lot of data, we have a lot of data problems to solve, and the way we'll be successful is to make everyone inclusive. Uh, you know, you think about the old days, I mean, you know, uh, d data silos or shadow IT, some might call it, that's been, that's been around for decades. Um, and what hasn't changed was th this notion that, hey, everything needs to be sort of managed centrally. Uh, but with the cloud and with the technologies that we have today, we have the right technology and the tooling to democratize that data and democratize uh, not only just the access, but also sort of building, you know, building blocks and sort of taking uh, building blocks which are relevant to your product or your business and adding to the, the overall data mesh. We've got all that technology. Um, the, the challenge is for us to really embrace it uh, and make sure that uh, we, uh, you know, we implement it from an organi organizational standpoint. So it, it, thinking about super cloud, you know, there's a layer that lives above the clouds and adds value. And you think about your brands, you got 30 brands, you mentioned shadow IT. If let's say one of those brands, you know, HBO or TNT, whatever, they want to go, they, hey, we really like, you know, Google's analytics tools. And, you know, they maybe go off and build something. I don't know if that's even allowed. Maybe, maybe it's not, but, but then you, you build this data mesh is, uh, my question is around multi-cloud, you know, cross cloud, super cloud, if you will. Is that an advantage for you as a practitioner or is that just make things more complicated? Uh, I really, uh, I really love the idea of a uh, multi-cloud. I think, I think it's great. I think that it should have been the norm, uh, not the exception. I feel like you know people talk about it as if it's the exception. That should have been the case. I will say though, uh, I feel like multi-cloud uh, should be should evolve organically. So back to your point about some of these different brands and you know different brands or different business units uh, or even in a merger and acquisition uh, situation where two different companies or multiple different companies come together with different technology stacks um, you know i feel like that's an organic organic evolution um, and making sure that we use the concepts and the technologies around the the multi cloud to 
may, to bring everyone together, that's, you know, that's where we need to be. And, and again, it talks to the fact that, you know, each of those business units and each of those groups have their own unique needs. And we need to make sure that we embrace that and we enable that rather than stifling everything. Uh, now, where I, you know, I, I have a little bit of a challenge with the multi-cloud is when uh, technology leaders try to uh, build it by design. Um, so there's a notion there that, hey, you know, you need to sort of uh, diversify and don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, and so we need to have this multi-cloud thing. I, I feel like that that is just sort of creating more complexity where it doesn't need to be. We can we can all sort of uh, simplify our lives, but where it uh, evolves organically, absolutely. I think I think that's the right way to go. But Ash, so Ash, if it evolves organically, don't you need some kind of um, cloud interpreter to, to to create a common experience across clouds? Does that exist today? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, there is a lot of technology that exists today um, and that helps, um, you know, go between uh, these different clouds. A lot of these sort of um, cloud agnostic technologies that you talked about, the snowflakes and the data breaks and so forth of the world, um, they operate in multiple clouds. They operate in multiple regions within a given cloud and uh, multiple uh, clouds. So they span all of that and they have the tools and technology. So I feel like the tooling is there. Um, you know, there, you know, there does need to be more of an evolution around the tooling. And I think the market's need are going to dictate that. I feel like uh, the market is there. They're asking for it. So there's definitely going to be that evolution, but the technology is there. I think just making sure that, uh, you know, we embrace that and we sort of uh, embrace that as a challenge and not try to sort of shut all of that down and, you know, box everything into one. What's the biggest challenge? Is it is it a governance or, you know, security or is it more kind of, uh, uh, or like you're saying, ad adoption, you know, cultural? Um, I think it's a combination of cultural as well as governance. Um, and so, you know, the cultural side I talked about, right, just making sure that, you know, we give these different teams a seat at the table and uh, they actually bring that technology into the mix. Um, and we use the modern tools and technologies to make sure that every everybody sort of plays nice together. Uh, that is definitely, we have ways to go there. Um, but then in terms of governance, that is, that is a big, uh, another big problem that most companies are just starting to wrestle with, uh, because like I said, I mean, the, the data silos and shadow IT, that's been around there, right? The only difference is that we're now sort of bringing everything together in a cloud environment. You know, the, the collective organization has access to that. And, and now we, we just realized, oh, we have quite a data problem at our hands. So how do we sort of organize this data, make sure that the quality is there, the trust is there, when people look at that data, you know, a lot of those questions are now coming to the forefront because everything is sort of so transparent with the cloud, right? Um, and so I feel like, you know, again, putting in the right processes um, and the right tooling to uh, address that is going to be critical in the next years to come. Is sharing data across clouds something that adds is, is valuable to you or even within a single cloud, you know, being able to share data? And, and my question is not just within your organization, but but even outside your organization, is that something that is has sort of hit your radar? Is it mature, or is that something that really would add value to your business? Uh, uh, data sharing is huge, and it's uh, and again, this is another one of those things which isn't uh, you know which isn't new. Um, you know, I remember back in the '90s, you know, when uh, we had to share data externally, um, you know, from our, with our partners or our vendors, they used to they used to physically send us like. You know, stacks of these these tapes or uh, you know uh, sort of physical media you know on on some truck um, and we've evolved since then right I mean um, you know it's it's it went from that to uh, sharing files online and so forth um, but data sharing as a concept and as a concept which is uh, now very frictionless through these different technologies that we have today. Um, that that is very new, um, and that is something. Uh, like I said, it's it, it's always been going on, but that needs to be really embraced more as well. Um, we as a company heavily uh, leverage data sharing um, between our own different brands and business units. That helps us make that 
data mesh so that uh, you know when a CNN, as an example, um, you know uh, builds their own data model based on you know election data and the kinds of data that they need. Uh, compare that with you know other data in the rest of the company, sports, uh, entertainment, and so forth and so on. Everyone has their unique data, but that data sharing capability brings it together wherever there is a need. So you think about you know um, having a um, Tiger Woods documentary as an example on on HBO Max and making sure that you know you reach the audiences that are interested in golf and interested in sports and so forth right that all comes through the magic of data sharing so it's really critical internally for us and then externally as well because um, you know uh, just understanding how our products are doing on our partners networks and different distribution channels that's that's important and then just uh, understanding how our consumers are consuming it um, you know off off properties right i mean you know we have brands um, that transcend just the screen right uh, we have a lot of physical merchandise that you can buy in the store so so again understanding who's buying the batman action figures after the batman movie was released uh, that's another critical insight so it all it all gets enabled through data sharing um, and something we re rely heavily on. So I wonder if I get your perspective on this. So I feel like the nirvana of data mesh is if I want to use a, a, you know, Google BigQuery, an Oracle database, or a Microsoft database, or Snowflake, Databricks, Amazon, whatever, that that's a node on the mesh. And, and you know, in, in the perfect world, you can share that data, it can be governed, and, and I, don't, I don't think we're you know, quite there today. So, but within a platform, maybe it's within Google or within Amazon or within Snowflake or you know Databricks, you know, you if you're in that world, maybe even Oracle, you actually can do so, you know some levels of data sharing, maybe greater with some than others. Do you mandate as an organization that you have to use this particular data platform, or, or are you saying, hey, we are architecting a, a data mesh for the future where we 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 believe the technology will support that, or maybe you've invented some technology that supports that today. Can you help us understand that? Um, yeah, I, I always feel like mandate is a strong uh, area and that that breeds the, you know, it breeds the shadow IT and the data silos. Um, so, so we don't uh, mandate, we do make sure that there's a consistent set of governance rules, policies and tooling um, that's that's there so that everyone is on the same page. Um, however, at the same time, um, our focus is really operating in a federated way. That's been our solution, right? Uh, is to make sure that we we work within a within a common set of tooling, uh, you know, which may be different technologies, which which in some cases may be different clouds. Um, although we're not that, uh, you know, multi multi cloud. Um, so, you know, what what we're trying to do is making sure that everyone who has that technology already built, um, you know, as long as it is, it sort of follows uh, certain standards, it's it's modern, it has, um, you know, it has the capabilities that will eventually allow us to be successful and eventually allow for that data sharing uh, amongst those different nodes, as you put it, as long as that's the case, uh, and as long as there's a governance layer, a master governance layer, uh, where, you know, we know where all that data is and uh, who has access to what, and we can sort of be really confident about the quality of the data. As long as that case, our approach to that is, uh, is really that federated approach. So did I hear you correctly? You're, you're not multi-cloud today? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, there are certain uh, spots where we use that, but uh, by and large, um, uh, you know, we're, we rely on a particular cloud and that's that's just been, like I said, it's it's been the evolution. It, it was our evolution. Um, you know, we decided early on to focus on a single cloud um, and that's that's the direction we've been going in. So do you want to go to multi-cloud or you you feel like you, you mentioned organic before, if a, if a business unit wants to go there, as long as they're adhering to those standards that you put out, maybe recommendations? That, that that's okay, uh, is that, does that, I guess my question is, does that bring benefit to your business that you're, you'd like to tap or do you feel like it's not necessary? I'll go back to the point of 
you know, if it happens organically, uh, we're going to be uh, open about it. Um, obviously, we'll have to look at um, every situation. Not all clouds are created equal as well. So there's there's a number of different considerations. But by and large, when it happens organically, uh, the, the key is uh, time to value, right? How do you quickly bring those technologies in as long as you could share the data, they're interconnected, uh, they're secured, they're governed, we are um, confident on the quality as long as those principles are met. Um, you know, um, you know, we could definitely uh, go in that direction. Um, but by and large, I mean, we're sort of uh, sort of evolving in a in a singular direction. But even within a singular cloud, uh, you know, our, we're a we're a global company, um, and uh, you know, we have audiences around the world. So making sure that uh, even within a single cloud, those different regions interoperate um, as one, that's a bigger challenge that we're having to solve uh, as well. Last question, kind of to the future of data and cloud, how it's going to evolve. Do you see a day when companies like yours are increasingly going to be offering you know, data, their software, services, and becoming more of a technology company, sort of pointing your tooling and your proprietary knowledge at the external world you know, as an opportunity, as a business opportunity? That's a very interesting concept, and I know uh, companies have done that, and you know some of them have been extremely successful. I mean, Amazon is the biggest example that comes to mind, right? When they launched AWS, something that they had that expertise they had internally, and they offered it to the world as a product. Um, but by and large, I think it's going to be far and few between. Especially, uh, it's going to be focused on uh, companies. Uh, that have technology as their DNA or, or, or almost like in the technology sector, building technology. Um, most other companies, um, you know, have different markets that they are um, addressing. And in my opinion, uh, a lot of these companies, what they're trying to do is really focus on the problems that we uh, that we can solve for ourselves. I think there's enough, there are more problems than we have people and expertise. So uh, my my guess is that uh, most large companies, they're gonna uh, you know focus on solving their own problems. A few, like I said, you know, more tech focused companies that would want to be in that business uh, would probably branch out. But by and large, I think companies will continue to focus on uh, you know serving their customers and serving their own business. All right, Ash, we're gonna leave it there. Ash Nasir, thank you so much for your perspectives. It was Great to see you. I'm sure we'll see you uh, face to face uh, uh, later on this year. This is great. Thank you for having me. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there for more great content from SuperCloud 2. We'll be right back.